What's up guys? Welcome back to the Build Studio. I'm Chris and today we'll be unboxing and reviewing this all new A1 3D printer from Bamboo Labs. Now this one in particular is the Combo, which comes with their all new AMS light and retails for $559. Now, if you aren't planning to do any kind of multicolor prints or you don't need the AMS, you can also get the standalone 3D printer for around $399. Now I know this video is a little late and this printer has been out for a couple of weeks now, but because of the holidays and because I just got back from vacation, I wanted to make sure that I shared with you my unboxing and review since I skipped buying the mini version of this 3D printer previously. Now I know a lot of people have criticized Bamboo Labs for going back on their original comment against 3D printers that utilize bed slingers, only ending up to release one of their own in this A1 and A1 mini. But I'm actually excited to see how well this thing performs and how well this thing works. Now from a performance perspective, this A1 pretty much has the same specs as their enclosed version of 3D printers, which I do still feel dominates the market in terms of print quality and speed. This is really more of a deconstructed version of all their enclosed units, pretty much in every way. Now what I'm interested in seeing is if this new A1 is slightly faster than the enclosed printers, really due to the fact that the print head doesn't have to move around as much. Anyways, stay tuned and we'll check this thing out. Okay, so at first glance, this box is definitely a lot smaller and lighter than the previous Bamboo Lab 3D printers that we unboxed on this channel. And that's primarily because there is no enclosure involved. It's actually quite amazing that both the 3D printer and AMS are included in this smaller form factor box. Now both the printer and the AMS will require a little bit more assembly than the previous enclosed printers, which I guess isn't really surprising. Now from a packaging perspective, all the contents of the box are secured and protected using a mixture of form fitting foam and inflated plastic material to protect the three layers of material containing the parts for the combo. Now the printer itself comes with your typical instruction manual as well as a PEI textured build plate, which is pretty much standard for most of Bamboo Labs printers these days. Now once you do get into the box, the top layer of packaging does include the AMS base, the four spool holders, and a package of Bamboo Labs filament swatches, which is actually th something that's pretty nice to have especially because it does make ordering specific colors and types of materials for your 3D prints a lot easier. You'll also find your standard toolkit and also a random 3D printed model kit designed by a random Bamboo Labs community member. Now this was unexpected and it's a great way to promote and support the user community. So congratulations and good job Bamboo Labs for supporting your community. Now in my case, I did get this triple access Torbillion model component kit that was designed by a user named McMaven, which looks pretty intricate. Now the thing about these included sample prints is that they only include some of the hardware. So you'll actually have to scan a barcode which takes you to the 3D print itself so you can print some of those parts out as well and then assemble it. Now continuing with the unboxing, the next layer actually contains the main AMS component which is surprisingly lightweight and made completely of plastic. And in my opinion, it does have a lot less moving parts. However, because it's not a chamber, it also means that there's more of a challenge for keeping your filament in the best printing condition. Now that of course is unless you print filament dry box assemblies, which I believe is available online that works with this AMS. Now included in the packaging, you also do get the parts for a filament mount which you can use if you didn't order the AMS or if you only want to feed a single spool of filament throughout the printer itself. You'll also find the vertical assembly which includes the all new print head module. Now what's funny is this piece of the printer seems to be the only part made of metal and like most bed slinger printers will need to be assembled and connected to the base of the printer itself which is secured in the third layer of packaging. Along with this, you get a small sample of PLA basic print filament, a pack of desiccant, and a set of PTFE tubes for the AMS. Now one thing that's not included in the packaging, but that Bamboo does provide, there is also an optional mount that you can download and print to mount the AMS on the printer itself. However, for my use cases, I'm not sure if I'm going to do that or not. Now overall, from an assembly perspective, it should be pretty self-explanatory. 
and it should only take about 15 to 30 minutes to fully assemble both the printer and the AMS. Now starting with the printer itself, it's really just a matter of snipping off some zip ties, removing some cardboard and foam material, removing the protective film from the build plate itself, and then mounting the vertical assembly to the base using the included screws and tools included with the printer itself. Now one thing to keep in mind is to remove the four retaining screws on the bottom of the base of the 3D printer itself. What this does is it unlocks the print bed which is something that's very important and a step you shouldn't forget. Now one piece of advice, you may want to keep these screws for later use in case you want to mount the AMS on the printer itself using the downloadable AMS mount. I do believe that mount requires some extra screws and these will serve that purpose. Now when it comes to the AMS, it is also easy to assemble and set up, especially if you're following the instruction manual that Bamboo Labs provides. Assembly pretty much involves connecting the base to the AMS assembly using a bunch of the included screws that come with the box itself. Once that's done, all you have to do is connect the different AMS rotary spool holders onto the AMS itself. Now when you're doing that, they are color coded so that you can make sure that you're placing each of the spool holders in the right place. And then once assembly of the AMS is complete, all you have to do is connect the AMS to the printer using the proprietary port on the back of the 3D printer itself, which by the way is also nice because it does come with two ports, so you can potentially add two AMS lights to this 3D printer in the future. Now once everything is assembled, it's just a matter of plugging the printer in and powering it on. Now the first step when you power this thing on is to connect it to Wi-Fi and run the calibration which is unique for this specific printer because it does include a speed and noise calibration. Now that's something that's not included in previous Bamboo Lab 3D printers that I know of. Now what's nice and refreshing that I realized during the calibration is the difference in noise levels that the printer makes when the active noise cancellation is enabled. With that feature, the printer is so quiet. Now, once that part of the calibration is complete, the printer does do its usual thing and goes through the standard vibration and bed leveling calibrations, which I also notice is a lot faster and more efficient than the previous Bamboo Lab printers that I own. Now one feature that I do like about this printer is that this printer does have a rubber pad at the back of the print bed itself to clean the print head. It does seem to do a better job than the roller in the previous enclosed model of printers. Now in addition to that, when it comes to this AMS light, Although it does feel a little bit cheaper and a little less durable than the enclosed AMS that I previously had, I do like the fact that the new design can accommodate these cardboard spools. Now that was a headache for me always having to print spool rings for cardboard spools in the previous full size AMS. So I'm glad that this now works with cardboard spools. Now before we move on to some test prints, I'd like to thank Fix Dry for sponsoring a part of this video and sending me some of their multicolored PLA silk filament to test out and share with you. Now I've been using this multicolor filament from Fix Dry for a while now for a lot of my multicolored print jobs and they always turn out amazingly nice. Now thanks to Fix Dry's sponsorship, we'll be using some of this multicolor filament in today's review to test how well this A1 printer from Bamboo Labs performs especially because silk filament can be a little bit picky at times. So it's really going to put this printer to the test. Now, if you like the results of the sample prints in today's video, please consider using my link in the description section below to pick up some of this multicolor PLA silk filament from Fix Dry for yourself. And to make it a little bit more sweeter, if you use my link or the code M3ZK, you'll get an extra 10% off your order. So definitely check it out. Getting back to the review and talking a little bit about the performance of this printer. Now although the A1 has identical specs to the X1C, the P1P, and the P1S, it did manage to print this Benchy slightly faster at 14 minutes versus 17 minutes on my other Bamboo Lab printers. So it was slightly faster. Now I'm not sure if that's due to improvements in software or hardware but I am assuming it could be because this is a bed slinger printer where the bed moves in conjunction with the print head. So that means there's a lot less travel time for the print head to move around. But then again, that's only my guess. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Now definitely what's nice about that faster print speed is that you don't lose any quality from a print output perspective. 
So as you can see, not only is it completing this print faster, but the quality of the finished product is as close to perfect as I would expect from any Bamboo Lab 3D printer. Now, in addition to the Benchy, I also did try a more complicated multicolor print using the PLA silk filament that I got from Fix Dry. So as you can see, this Crystal Dragon from Cinderwing turned out flawlessly and with incredible detail. It easily flexes and moves without any kind of effort at all, and it looks crazy cool. Now from a print perspective, it took about 11 hours to print this fully posable Crystal Dragon, and I gotta say, it looks pretty amazing using the multicolored PLA silk filament from Fix Dry. Now, if you're interested in this STL file, it was created by a person named Cinderwing who creates a lot of high quality STL files. And if you're interested in getting this for yourself, I will leave a link to the file in the description section below. Now, if you don't wanna go through the trouble of paying for and downloading or just printing some of these larger files, I am also an authorized seller of these and other prints, which I do sell on my storefront, my Etsy store, and my Shopify accounts, if you're interested in purchasing some of these prints for yourself. Now, one challenge that I did run into while printing was these cables right here that got stuck behind the vertical assembly of the printer itself. Now that caused a couple of print failures near the end of a few prints that I was doing. Because some of these cables did get stuck behind the vertical assembly of the printer, it did keep the print head from being able to fully travel across the full axis of the printer itself, which caused a few failed prints. This brings me to a piece of advice for anyone who is new to 3D printing and even those who bought this A1 combo. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that the AMS is placed a little more in front of the A1 and not parallel or right next to it so the wire doesn't travel behind the vertical assembly. Now that's not a big deal, but it makes a world of difference and helps to avoid that cable issue that I ran into. So the recommended placement for this AMS is a little bit more in front or at an angle of the actual printer itself. This just ensures that none of the cables actually travel behind the printer or get stuck. Now another 3D sample file that I tried that came with this A1 printer is this intricate looking vase. Now as you can see, it's got a lot of nice texture and a, just a cool design. And I ended up using this multicolor silk filament from Fix Dry and it turned out amazing. As you can see, there's no flaws and it turned out perfectly. This is just an example of the type of quality that you can get with a lot of these Bamboo Lab printers, whether it's a bed slinger or their chamber systems. So altogether, I am pretty happy with the way this print turned out. Now the other thing that I noticed, which I mentioned previously, is just how quiet this printer is. The noise reduction feature is simply amazing at keeping the noise down while the printer is printing. In fact, I was able to keep this in the same room with me while I was on a con call, without it being too distracting or loud. I think for the price, the A1 and the A1 combo is definitely going to set a new standard when it comes to bed slinger 3D printers. For the price, you get amazing print quality and speeds up to 500 millimeters per second. You also get a pretty modest build that can accommodate most print needs of today at 256 by 256 by 256 millimeter print volumes. You also get a built-in 1080p camera, as well as all the features we've come to expect from Bamboo Labs and their 3D printers. Actually, you get more. In addition to that, you also get full auto calibration, multicolor printing capabilities, assuming you do buy this AMS bundle. You also get active flow rate compensation, as well as an all new active motor noise canceling feature, which makes this thing super quiet. And I love the redesign of the print head that now allows you to quickly swap out the print nozzle without any kind of effort. Then of course, there's also the typical features such as Wi-Fi, a great companion app, which is Bamboo Studio and the Bamboo Handy app, which you can use to control and monitor the printers and the print jobs that you've got going. It's also got an amazing and a very responsive LCD touchscreen that's a lot larger and a lot better than I'd say than the P1P and the P1S which is something that I'm excited about and hopefully is something that they're gonna use in future printers. Now to be completely honest, I'm not very big on the bed slinger type 3D printers and I do think that Bamboo Labs changed the game when they introduced the X1C and the enclosed chamber 3D printers. 
But I do think that this Bamboo Labs A1 3D printer has quickly changed my mind. Now I'm sure, like most of you, I am still waiting for Bamboo Labs next 3D printer that will incorporate a larger print bed and build volume. But for now, I'm super happy with this A1 combo, as well as my other Bamboo Lab 3D printers. They all perform flawlessly. And that commitment to quality has not changed with this A1 printer. This is definitely a printer combo that I can recommend for anyone who is either just starting out 3D printing or anyone who just wants to increase the number of printers that they have in their print farm at a more affordable price. Now most print jobs that I've done don't require the enclosure so I can see myself buying a few more of these in the future because they are cheaper. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Please feel free to use the link in the description section below to purchase one of these combos for yourself or even use my link below if you're interested in purchasing any of these multicolored fixed dry filaments using my discount code and link below. I appreciate all the support and if you haven't already, please make sure you click that like button and subscribe to my channel. And also make sure you ring that bell icon to get notified when I post new content. I'd love for you to join me whether it's unboxing 3D printing hardware or joining me as I try out new 3D print jobs or just experimenting with the printers that I already have. Now I do have a series I'm working on where I'm trying to print both a Blue Beetle and an Iron Man suit, so definitely check back so you can join me on those 3D print journeys to see how well they turn out and what I learned along the way. Until the next video, see ya.